Good morning and welcome to our service of worship today in St. Columbus, 31st of January 2021. We continue to meet uh, virtually rather than in person, so this recording is, has been pre-recorded and uploaded for your enjoyment and for your, to facilitate members of this church and others to worship. Let's move on then to a few announcements, just to say that um, we continue to deliver uh, a brochure which has been distributed from the Presbyterian Church, um, wrapped in cellophane, so uh, hygienically so. It's called For Now, and it's belonging to the church in unusual times. It's been a joy for me to get round some houses and stand and talk at the doorstep about that brochure and just catch up with people. Which one thing leads to another. I've been surprised and impressed with a number of you who maybe I didn't expect, but said they'd seen these these recordings online. I didn't know you had facilities. But here's a question for you and an invitation. In order to live a wee bit of fellowship and interact one with the other, I would love it that some of you folk uh, could tell me what you're up to, what you've been doing, the new habits, the uh, the things you've enjoyed doing as we've been confined uh, to home and to hearth. So if you're baking bread, if you're knitting, sewing, or uh, painting something, or doing something creative that's visual and that's worth talking about, please get in touch with me. The number may appear here in the caption below. Um, ring us up, let me know, and I can come around record it or, or whatever. But um, other folk would love to know and hear from you. So that's an invitation just to create, even in this platform, a bit, of, uh, a bit of news, a bit of sharing. Let's begin our service of worship then with uh, these words as a call to worship. We gather to celebrate and worship God, the creating spirit, who moved over the earth and everything in it and its peoples. We celebrate the defeat of all that keeps us from God. We gather to join in the chorus of praise to the King of glory, the Lord our God who is strong and mighty in love and mercy. We give thanks that God is always present to those who seek him in sincerity and in truth. Amen. And so today's text we find in Mark chapter 1, Jesus confronts what confines and limits those who would worship him. Before we get to that point, um, music today is recorded uh, and we're going with Keith and Kristen Gelly's opening praise by faith.
turn to our reading, which we'll find in Mark chapter 1, beginning the reading of verse 20, 21. They came to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out, What have you to, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently, and he came out with him, come out of him with a shriek. The people were so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching. And with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Let's pray before we come to this reading that we'll understand what God says. Unstop our eye. Our ears, O God, that we may hear your word proclaimed today. Open our minds and hearts to be changed. Free us from the unclean spirits of worry, fear, destruction and pride. Teach us, Lord. Bring us that new teaching that we may follow you more fully. Amen. So I've titled this, They Were Amazed and Twice. They were amazed can you imagine what it would be like? And I'm, I'm doing my best to imagine people shuffling in here on a regular weekday service, or weekend service, and they, they nod and say hello to familiar faces and say hello and catch up a bit of detail. And then the young preacher comes up, obviously younger than me, and he opens the scripture or starts to speak. And then suddenly, the man at the back, the man they'd known, turned that familiar weekly service into something they would never forget. Ordinarily, you talk over a Sunday service or what was said, what you'd heard with a few family friends over lunch. But in this story, word spread rapidly, quickly over the whole region of Galilee because that service of worship didn't start as they expected. Now, something goes on in this service of worship that Jesus conducted. And I'm going to take it in three simple titles. It's Jesus teaches with authority, the first point. Jesus heals with authority. And then lastly, Jesus saves with authority. So let's work through this passage just briefly as we have the time together. 
and see what that means for us today. <coughs> Jesus teaches with authority. He comes and <coughs> he opens the scripture and he explains it. Not just to say what's there or to share one rabbi says this or another says that and, and express different viewpoints. He doesn't clarify some small detail that they know already. He doesn't uh, bring out the original Greek because, well, hey, or, or explain in Aramaic what was happening in the, the nuance of the history of words. He doesn't play those games. He doesn't speak either of interpreting the scriptures the way their teachers would do. Instead, he senses their lives as no other, and he takes that scripture as if he were the author of it. It's the sort of thing that if, if somebody made or wrote the book and another did their best to explain it, if Jesus effectively knows the inside, the purpose of Scripture, its history, how it came about, and how that will affect our lives, this is the authority he took with that word. Now, when Jesus starts beginning and claiming authority on lives, that isn't just talking about, that is talking to and with and even against those strongly held positions that are reluctant to give way. And dramatically in this passage, we find that not only were the people amazed at his teaching, but one person at least rebelled in a way that was dramatic. I don't know, I wasn't there, I don't know what that looked like, whether it was a scream or a different sort of voice. Uh, certainly Hollywood has portrayed demon possession in many ways. In these modern times, there are others who would explain it away and say that it could be an epileptic fit, it could be a mental illness, it could be a lot of things. Perhaps in that scattergun approach, there's room for us all. I do believe in the genuinely demonic and the possessed, and I've had... What little experience I've had of that chilled me to the bone and thought I came away feeling there's a lot more happening in this world and beyond it than meets the eye. But that's not the place for this discussion. I'll say that is a category. There are other categories, and indeed Milton Illness or others, leave that people are not free to be who they ought to be or who they used to be. But we have here, when Jesus confronts with his authority, it contests another authority which previously held sway in that man, and that man seemed to come in and out of weekly worship, we imagine, with no particular contestation, no contest before, and, and that was okay. But here and now, face to face, there is a showdown. This clarity that Jesus spoke of, it brought a challenge, and it brought a challenge to that man's life. And on the outside, when most people were content to enjoy Jesus' teaching, that man brewed and boiled over inside until the voice shrieked from him. The demonic realm was contested here in what was, to everybody else's appearance, an ordinary weekly service of worship. And when it ripped, it made a difference that they all talked about for weeks and years there. It comes down to name-calling and turf wars. Let me explain what I mean with those two phrases. If somebody knows your name, they know something about you. If the name, and my name, has a certain Scottish ring about it, it, it tells you where the forebearers came from. It means that if you have a phone book or other registries, you can look down the name, you can find who they are, where they are, and find other details. And so too in the spiritual realm, that when Jacob wrestles with God, or is it the devil, or is it who he is, he says, I will not let you go and tell me, you tell me your name. Give me a handle on who you are. And indeed that angel, as it was, blessed him, touched his hip and escaped. So it is here, the demonic calls out Jesus of Nazareth by name. I know who you are, but have you come to destroy us? There's a turf war going on that Jesus previously in heaven, the, the, the God of this world, Satan, seems to hold dominion and now it's a contest that when Jesus shows up it's like there's a new sheriff in town and the rogue who, who roamed the streets and the people were cowered powerlessly behind them suddenly they've got an ally they didn't expect so he calls his name 
What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. He has his name, he has his purpose. He has his calling and then he asks his purpose. Have you come to destroy us? And so Jesus dislodges him and says that he does not have a right to the occupation of that man. Be quiet. Come out of him. And so one authority trumps the other. Jesus' authority on that demon demon or evil spirit is such that it convulses him, shakes him free. And so too, as we look here and see how Jesus not only teaches with authority, but he heals with authority, the implication then is that he saves by authority. When Jesus comes to us, it's when we can't seem to get better by ourselves that Jesus has authority to save you from those things that dominate and even our own will or lack of will. When we fall into temptation, Jesus has the authority to set us free from that darkness. And that might be addictions, it might be habits, it might be controlling practices, it may even be of a spirit of demonic nature. Jesus can set you free. And when our heart is broken, he has the authority to bind it up again. He can make and mend the things that we cannot fix. And if we despair, he has authority to put deep hope, hope deep into our heart. He has authority to still the restless soul, and he has authority to turn our ashes into beauty. This is the one who made us, brought us back, redeemed us, and set us with a new purpose and a new life. He can do it. And so, if you fall into a sleep of death someday in the future, he too has authority to raise us up and to be with here where he is forever. This is the authority of the risen Christ. And he strides across Galilee in these days and proclaims that he is there purposefully as God's agent to redeem this world. So if he saves with authority, Jesus finishes the gospel, resurrected, and he says to his disciples as they gather in that hill near Galilee, and he says to them, all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. And so that authority continues. That Jesus, in his name, demons are cast out, lives are brought back, bodies healed, hearts mended. And so I trust with you that this morning if you're feeling troubled or there's burdens that you cannot get, shift it on your own. Bring it to Jesus. Lay it out to him. The good news is that Christ calls to a new life and enables us to begin again and again by his authority because there is no other authority, no other name under heaven whereby we may be saved. His is the name that defeats all enemies and that cures all else. Let's come now to prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we call upon you through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to give us more of that compassion and that authority of Jesus. We ask that you embolden us to heal the many troubles, diseases, sickness, and oppression that that holds our humanity, to drive out the demons that afflict our contemporary world. Lord, send us as your agent to those lands that lie under darkness and oppression. We pray for places where government is corrupt or justice is rare, where abuse is endemic and the weak and the poor have nowhere else to run to. Lord, speak truth. And speak truth and authority to those who abuse their position and raise up those to defend them. Lord, we pray for our land. We pray for the continual um, program of inoculations. We pray for those shielding to stay safe and stay sane and to stay stay kind, generous to one another. Lord, we pray for your word. And it's the truth that sets people free. We pray for a world that seems predominated by theories, conspiracy theories, half-truths and twisted words. Things that are convenient to say at the time 
and yet only you say only the truth will set us free. Lord, give us that strong name of Jesus to speak into truth. Uh, places where darkness, oppression, and, and burdens are there. To take our stand as the redeemed people of God and speak spiritual authority into, into these needs. Lord, we pray for difficult family lives, for tensions within the home as these days and weeks draw on and people get bored with one another. We pray for those who suffer illnesses not directly connected with COVID, but, but their, their needs seem to be put to the back of the queue. Lord, be with them. May these patients be more patient than they, they expected to be. And may help come alleviation and healing, we pray in Jesus' name. And so now, we conclude our service with this, this benediction and blessing. Jesus comes to us, offering healing and hope, speaking and acting with authority. You have listened to him, and I continue to listen to him. And go into this world, confident of God's love and healing power. Go in peace, and may God's love and peace be with you always.